This video is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. We are here for the UFC 284 predictions. Headlined by Islam Makashev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Pretty much to determine who is the best fighter in the world. It's either going to be one of these two, whoever wins on Saturday. But to be truthfully honest about the whole card, it's lacking a bit of star power. Hopefully the fights actually turn out to be good. Usually it's cards like this that do perform well, especially those prelims. But disregarding just the main event, the co-main event is excellent. Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett for the interim featherweight title in case, you know, maybe Volkanovski beats Islam by some chance and vacates his featherweight title as he wants to stay at lightweight. Maybe that happens, so they have this interim belt just in case for that. Or Alex just doesn't fight for a while. Yair versus Emmett, though, is a great fight. Guys who are completely opposite in their styles. They approach a fight completely differently. I'm actually really excited about that fight. Randy Brown versus Jack Della Maddalena is one of the best fights on the card as well. I don't think people are giving Randy Randy Brown as much credit as he deserves. He does have a style that could give Jack a bit of an issue here, but Randy Brown has become more of a veteran. He has much more experience than Jack does, and for the first time in his career, he's going up against a much younger fighter with much less experience, and maybe he can use his to his advantage this time instead of fighting guys like Francisco Trinaldo, Warley Elvis, etc. Randy Brown's been going up against these older guys with much more experience. Justin Tava versus Parker Porter. We pretty much know how those heavyweight fights are going to go down. I'm always excited about Tyson Pedro. He's extremely talented. As long as he makes the right moves and fights, the guy can literally become a top contender. Jamie Malarkey versus Francisco Prado is probably the most exciting fight on the whole card, even including the main event. Loma versus Reed is going to be an interesting one between two good strikers and Zubaira Tukugov getting another good fight for himself here, probably going to put on another good performance. So as you can see, 11 total fights and it's not the most stacked, but hopefully they do deliver. And I have to say that the prospect of the night is definitely going to go to Jack Della Maddalena. He's a young 26-year-old with tremendous boxing skill. He's a very good fighter, promising, tough, and brings the skills to put on a good performance. The fighter of the night are both the main eventers. Islam Makhachev and Alexander Volkanovsky are the biggest names on the card. Islam, I would say, is the biggest star of the whole card, where he's also putting his status on the line here. Volkanovsky is not really losing much except his pound-for-pound -pound ranking. But all eyes are going to be on both of these two fighters, man. The stake of the night, the fighter that is in hot waters, is Shane Young. As he is on a two-loss streak right now, he loses to Blake. I don't know if he sticks around that much longer, man. He probably has one more loss in him. He definitely needs to win his fight. The banger of the night, the most explosive fun fight, is Jamie Malarkey versus Francisco Prado. These two guys do not hold their punches. They will go at you trying to knock you out. Prado especially has that kind of style. He's going to bring it right out of Malarkey. And I definitely think that the roof is going to be blown off the place in Australia with this fight here. And the fight of the night. I did want to say the co-main event. I think it's great, but I have to ultimately go with that main event. Islam Makhachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky are the two most skilled fighters on the card. It has the highest stakes. It's an extremely technical and skillful fight. But we'll see if it is competitive. I think Yair versus Emmett is going to be a bit more competitive. Unless they surprise us. But we're going to go to that first fight. Randy Brown versus Jack Della Maddalena. A lot of people, as well as the betting lines, are not giving Randy Brown credit here. He is a massive underdog going into the fight. As you can see here, a plus 246. But he definitely has a style that can give Jack a bit of an issue here. Number one, Jack does approach a fight like a boxer will. He does throw some teeps to the body to back you up. He will throw some head kicks to intercept your head movements. And actually, contrary to belief that people have about boxers, he has an excellent ability to check leg kicks. But nobody's really throwing leg kicks at him inside of combinations, as well as like weird angles. Randy Brown can do that. Being the much longer fighter, having a 5-inch reach advantage, as well as being 4 inches taller, with his awkward striking style, his kicks might be a bit trickier to defend against. But the thing is, they are opposite stance fighters. So if Randy Brown wants to hit the inside leg kick, the Southpaw Jack will be able to check those easier than if they were in the same stance. But we'll see if Randy Brown wants to go to the Lee leg kicks instead, or what he does really well, actually, the side kicks to the knee. And that's something that Jack doesn't really defend against that often. We're going to see how he goes up against those kind of leg kicks, which can really damage the knee, especially a guy who is very honest with his footwork like Jack is. He's not too tricky with his footwork, so it could be an easy target to throw at, but we'll see if Jack can actually defend those when they come his way. And another thing about those side kicks to the the knee and also the oblique kicks is that it's going to constantly force Jack on the outside range and not allow him to dig to the body into the head the way he likes. If Jack gets in close on Randy, things are going to be nasty for Randy Brown, man. Jack is going to rip to the body really early. He's going to be counting with the left hook or the right hook over the top in order to enter first. When the body and headshots get flung out at short range, I don't think Randy Brown's going to have the kind of defense in order to protect himself. Randy's constantly going to want to get away. That's how he approaches every single fight. And his last fight against Francisco Trinaldo was a clear example of how he's going to want to defend against a guy who wants to get in and just bomb on you. 
you. He constantly retreats for range. And yes, he is faster than Jack in almost everything he does. Footwork, punches, kicks. I don't know about reflexes. I think Jack may be faster at evading punches. Randy Brown is going to try to constantly keep distance and he's going to be forced backwards unless he's able to land a bunch of kicks to the body and to the leg and maybe eventually find those head kicks on Jack because remember they are in opposite stances which I think is going to favor Randy Brown's kicks more than anything else. Jack defends like a boxer as well. The times we've seen Jack have to defend head kicks, he does defend them like a boxer and that can leave openings here and there but the credit we have to give Jack's defense is it's it's tight, man. It's really tight. You have to be precise to land on him. His elbows are always tight to his body. His hands are always tight to his head. And he's constantly looking to check your kicks. He's a defensive wall, man. And once he finds that counter shot on you, that's definitely where I can see Jack winning the fight in this as well. I think body shots are going to be a big weapon for him, especially if he's able to stick his way on the inside. But I ultimately do think that Randy Brown has a much better chance than people are giving him. My prediction for the fight, though, is I am going to go with Jack Della Maddalena. And I'm going to go by a third round TKO. And as you can see, the odds I'm giving it are much, much smaller. I'm giving Randy Brown a big chance of winning here. The kicks cannot be underestimated. His range, his speed advantage, and the trickiness he has on his feet could give a more fundamental approach like Jack has. Major problems, man. I just ultimately think the biggest weakness out of both fighters is Randy Brown's infighting. And then we go to the co-main event, Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. For the interim featherweight title. These two guys are complete opposites in the way they fight. Long range kicking phenom finesser. Whereas Josh Emmett is an uber aggressive powerhouse that mostly just throws hands. He always tries to find angles to get in on you before he lands that big bomb. But oftentimes he takes these big movements to go on big angles in order to connect on you with those bombs. And I could definitely see where Yair can intercept those movements very easily with his kicks or even his check hooks. If Emmett starts pivoting long and blitzing it from long distances, he could get countered and the fight could end very quickly. But at the same time, I think if he's able to find his way inside on Rodriguez, Rodriguez is going to be in a bit of trouble because he doesn't have the best defense. It's getting much better. Yair's fundamentals have grown so much. And the first signs of those were his fights against Jeremy Stevens. Definitely hit a next level when he fought Max Holloway. But he still blocks punches with his his head sometimes and a punch from Josh Emmett is nothing like taking a punch from Max Holloway. If Emmett lands flush on Yair, he could put him out cold. Just like he did to Michael Johnson. That was a big example of that. Losing the fight, getting outboxed for the most part, and just lands one right overhand and the fight is over. But the fact that the fight is going to be five rounds, it's definitely going to favor Yair, who's been five rounds a few times in his career and definitely shows to have pretty good cardio. His pace in the Max Holloway fight was crazy. And he went the whole way like that. Or the Korean zombie fight. That was an insane pace. But people do have this kind of thought that Yair has bad cardio. He's gassed out in the past. But this modern version of Yair is not gassing out even at a fast pace. And he's always dangerous throughout the whole fight. But I could definitely see the jabs coming out for him constantly. He's going to be throwing a lot of kicks all over the place that Josh M has never seen before. In his training camp with Team Alpha Male. He's definitely not going to be seeing those kind of kicks from those guys either. None of those guys can really replicate what Yair does. They have a very similar style to what Emmett does. Whereas I think Yair is going to have examples in the gym of what Emmett is able to do. So the training camp advantage I think goes to Yair as well. But oftentimes it is pretty difficult to predict what Yair is going to do and the shots he can actually land on you. The combos he landed on Max were not predictable. The elbow he landed on Korean Zombie was not predictable. The crazy jumping kicks and spinning kicks and stuff he lands on all of his opponents are stuff that's very hard to prepare for. He finds things in the moment that I don't think he's actually predicting going into the fight. He sees things in the fights, he throws some stuff out there to deal with it, and he lands them. Now, the biggest thing that goes for Josh Emmett though, where I do think he might get outstruck for the most part, is his wrestling. His wrestling is strong. He is very powerful with his shots. He blasts right through you. He has a traditional American style wrestling, and he has a lot of horsepower behind those takedowns. And if anywhere we've seen Yair struggle, it is with wrestling. He hasn't been taken down too much as of late, but the last time we see him get dominated on the ground was against Frankie Yeager, and Frankie is small. He's not as big as Emmett or Yair. So we're going to see if Josh Emmett can make his wrestling work here, but I definitely do expect Yair is grappling to have improved so much over the years that his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and his constant activity off of his back is going to give Emmett some issues. So ultimately, my prediction for this fight, I am going to go with Yair Rodriguez. It is close, and I see him either getting a head kick or a flying knee knockout. I'll say in the third round as well. I think Emmett's movements are too big, and if you expose yourself like that against someone like Yair, who could throw up kicks like their jabs, you're pretty much just asking to eat a shin to the face. And then finally, we go to the main event. Islam Makashev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. This is the fight a lot of people have been waiting for. This is going to be in Australia, so it's uh, enemy territory for Islam, whereas last time he fought at home. 
and for the first time in Alex's career as a champion, he's going to be fighting in Australia. So it's going to be a different kind of environment for him. I don't know if the nerves are going to get to him. I don't know if he's going to want to perform more, but I definitely do think that Alex is extremely composed. You do have to look at his uh, games in rugby, always playing at home. He's dealt with that kind of thing for a different sport, and I think that is going to help his nerves going into this fight. And not only that, he's an extremely calculated fighter. He knows the task at hand, and I'm really curious to see what he can actually do here to change the odds because as you can see islam is just growing as a favor people are putting their money on islam more and more as time goes on he's now a minus 416 and a few days ago he was like a minus 350 and i'm gonna be honest i could kind of agree i do lower the odds on islam a bit but i definitely can see him dominating this fight firstly he has the attribute advantage when it comes to size strength he might even be more powerful by the punch as you can see, is 180 pounds cage weight. That is enormous for a lightweight. I think there's only a few guys that are actually bigger than that. I think Drew Dober is the only guy that has a recorded weight heavier than Islam. I believe his was 184 pounds in the cage, whereas Alex's 176 is not in the cage. That is his walk-around weight for this fight. At least that's what he said it was. Islam's walk-around weight is probably at like almost 190. And yes, Alex is a shorter, stockier, strong guy. But by watching Islam's fights, the way he's able to hold down his opponents when he gets a grip, and the stories of his opponents that have talked about how strong Islam is, guys who are much bigger than Alex, they all said that Islam's strength is out of this world. And they really did not expect him to be as strong as he was. I believe the same thing is going to happen for the smaller Alex. Alex does believe he is very strong. And he probably doesn't believe that Islam is going to be that much stronger than him. But I think when the fight goes down and Islam gets a hold of Alex, I think Alex is going to be shocked in his inability to get away from Islam's grip. But we're going to see though, man. I don't think Alex's strength is going to be a key here. I think it's more about his speed to get away from everything Islam throws at him. And his intelligence going into the fight is definitely going to be his biggest weapon here. He is one of the smartest fighters I've ever seen before. If anybody could figure Islam out, it could be someone like Volkanovsky. But that is a relatively easy thing to say because Islam fights everybody the same way. He's not doing something that nobody knows. Everybody knows what Islam is going to do and none of them can stop him. The only guy that temporarily stopped it for an entire round was Charles Oliveira. But then he got punched in the face and got dropped. And that is why Volkanovski cannot underestimate Islam striking. The guy can strike. Maybe it's not perfectly technical. Maybe it's not great in form and anything like that. I would say his kicks are great in form, but his punches definitely are not. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter though when you have takedowns in the mix, when you have the unpredictability of an MMA fight, even the ugliest punches in the world can catch you. It's all about how effective and how efficient you are. In Islam, is extremely effective and efficient in what he does and people can go and say that you know Volkanovski is just so much better of a striker and he's not Charles Oliveira but the difference between Charles and Volkanovski is Charles didn't necessarily have to worry too much about the wrestling he even attempted to take down Islam he didn't care about the wrestling necessarily Volkanovski is going to need to worry about that wrestling he's really going to need to be cautious about the takedown and that can ultimately open striking opportunities for Islam just as many openings as he had against Charles Volkanovski might be more tentative this time but it ultimately couldn't be a very defensive fight if that happens because Islam in general is a defensive striker he has good defense he has great footwork he's very fast for a lightweight and he can be a hard guy to hit but as I talked about in my breakdowns Volkanovski's leg kicks usually set up a lot of his hands set up a lot of his ability to find range and how fast he needs to be to enter on you those kicks are probably going to be out of the question for this fight as Islam is very good at catching kicks if Alex goes out there and throws a kick like Jorge did against Kamar Usman and got taken down Volk can get taken to the ground and the fight can end in the very first round he needs to avoid the ground as much as possible and that might mean he has to abandon the kicks but at the same time he definitely needs to keep a shorter lower stance to really put up a lot of defense on those takedowns discourage them as much as possible in the center of the cage but if he gets backed up to the fence all bets are off islam's gonna shoot on him to create contact and then he works his takedown afterward and i think up against the fence volkanovsky just not gonna defend the takedown because they're, they're just not gonna be single and double legs there's gonna be trips and throws all over the place before wrestling islam is a master at sambo he's great with trips and throws and he's gonna be maneuvering volkanovsky in ways that volk is not gonna expect volkanovsky's biggest chance of winning this is blitzing him down maybe even faking leg kicks in order to find punching opportunities and like i talked about in my breakdown that delayed jab is gonna be major for him man throws a jab delays it waits for islam's response and then attacks with his right hand in whatever way he has to if islam 
shoots a takedown under that delayed jab. Alex knows there's an uppercut opportunity as well as trying to sprawl with it. This is something that Ilya Tapurio is actually able to do against multiple different opponents. Or if Islam just moves straight backwards, which is something he does very often, whenever he throws punches at him, Islam moves away from it. Volkanovski could find maybe a light kick there because Islam will not be in the kind of stance in order to catch the kick. If he catches it in that way, the guy is just the best at catching kicks. Or if Islam tries to counter it with that check right hook, Volkanovski can attack him with the straight punches, beating those looping. But ultimately, my prediction for this fight, I am going to go with Islam Makashev, and I'm going to go by a second round submission. I think he's just too big, too strong, and his wrestling and grappling is just too dominant, man. I think he's just too good on the ground. He's also a very smart guy. He usually does not underestimate his opponents. He knows the threats that Volkanovski is going to show him. He comes from a very disciplined camp. They're not going to allow him to look down on the smaller guy. And even though he won't, I still think that Volkanovski might have a slightly better chance than people are giving him. He is still the featherweight champion. He's very experienced. He's beat some amazing fighters. He does have some advantages. I think his weaknesses are exactly what people are seeing. But I believe his strengths going into the fight against Islam are a bit overlooked. But if you are riding with Alexander Volkanovski, you have to go to mybookie.ag and capitalize on those odds. He's around a plus 290, so let's say if you were going to put like $10 on him, $50 on him, whatever, you can nearly triple your money if he wins. But if you go by a certain method for him to win, if you think he's going to win by a decision, that's a plus 460. If you think he's going to win by a knockout, that's a plus 820. Submission would be wild. Plus 2400 is just insane if you were able to get that on Islam. But I think either knockout or decision are the most likely ways that Volkanovski would win. And that is only if you do believe he's going to win the fight. For Islam Makashev, he has a plus 160 for a decision, plus 136 for a submission. Those are the most likely ways he's going to win that fight. If you just go with him winning, that's a minus 400. Very big favorite, and I do think he should win that fight. And I always do mention about the props here because... There are certain fights that are most likely going to end one way, and it's just up to you to predict who would win by that method. Like Jack Della Maddalena, most of his wins are by knockout, and if you think he's going to knock out Randy Brown, instead of just picking him to win, which would be a minus 333 favorite, rather pick him by knockout, minus 134. Those are way better for your odds. But to go with that, there are massive odds throughout the whole card. The biggest one is Zubaira Tukugov, who is a minus 625 favorite. You do have Loma is a minus 322. Jack Jenkins is a minus 370. Jamie Malarkey is a minus 285. That's an interesting one. I think that one is much closer. Or should I say that Prado has a bigger chance than they're giving him, considering how powerful he is, how aggressive he is, and his top pressure, if he's able to get it to the ground, is nothing to laugh at. Clayton Rodriguez is a minus 344. Tyson Pedro, minus 250. Jimmy Crew is a minus 192. There's a lot of crazy odds throughout this whole card. But what I will say is that the favorites of the card, the guys that are most likely going to win their fights as a favorite are Islam and Zubair Tukugov. Is there any underdog that I can see winning? Or they have the best underdog to win ratio? It might be Elise Reed. Elise Reed, I think, has a better chance than they're giving her. She's a massive underdog, though. A guy like Francisco Prado can always win this fight. He's also like 20 years old. Definitely going to get much better since the last time we saw him. Randy Brown, I'll say, is a mention because he is a massive underdog. But I will say that probably Blake Bilder and maybe, maybe Josh Emmett are your dogs of the card. Alexander Volkanovsky is also someone that you can't really overlook either. So make sure to capitalize on these odds by going to mybookie.ag and when you do, sign up for the deposit bonus where they'll match up your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. That means if you put in $10, they'll give you another $10. You put in $50, they give you another $50, etc. Matching all the way up to $1,000. And in order to activate this, make sure to use the promo code WEASEL, that's W-E-A-S-L-E, -E, to take advantage of MyBookie's sign-up offer. Visit mybookie.ag today and you can definitely win big. And that's ultimately the end of the predictions, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.